Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is International Master Camilla Tobaro and in this video I would like to show you how I analyze my game using the Decode Chess application. So, I have chosen as an illustration the game that I have played in the year of 2017 at the Festival of Rome, City Rome tournament and I played it uh, as white against uh, Liang Wanda. Well, um, you will see that I uh, made some mistakes during the game and that led uh, to Liang winning the game. And so I would like to focus on the key moments uh, of the game and try to uh, analyze them using this application. Good, so we started with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. So the Italian game and gioco piano. Knight to f6, pawn to d3, pawn to d6, this is all theory. Okay, so we move on and I expand a little bit on the queen side. And then I'm attacking the knight on f6. He will defend it with a queen, a castle, castle. Okay, so I continue developing my pieces. Everything is well. I have uh, taken the control of the open file, the b file. And now I would like maybe to take on f6 with my bishop uh, because in this way he will have to take back with the pawn and double the pawns since the queen has to remain on d8 and defend the bishop on b6. But uh, that's why he moves the bishop and I will occupy the center with the second pawn, pawn to d4, pawn to h6. And now this is a very important moment in the game. This is one of the critical moments of uh, in the game when I made a mistake. You see that uh, the advantage, okay, so let's say uh, from quite an equal position the advantage went to black after bishop to e3, so I'm seeing it right here in the graphic. Okay, so what is uh, the uh, computer's suggestion is that uh, in, instead of uh, retreating the bishop as I did, I played bishop to e3, um, but I should have taken the knight on f6 instead. So explaining the best line of stockfish, bishop takes f6, okay, threatens to take the queen, escapes the capture from the black's pawn on h6, and captures the black knight. Good. So queen has to take, of course, he doesn't want to double his pawns. And at this point, uh, can you see that black would like to bring the knight to f4, that is a weak square, so the computer is suggesting that I should push the pawn to g3 and take control of f4 and h4. Indeed, the light squares will become weak in that case. Uh, so rook to b8, rook takes to b8, bishop takes to b8, and then queen to e2 to simply um, complete my development and then uh, develop also the rook on b1, bringing it again on the open file and the situation in the center is to my favor can you see black can't push the pawn to d5 just yet so it looks like my king is safe and um, I'm better in the center okay so queen e2 is better than the alternatives queen to c2 queen to b1 or queen to b3 okay so let's go now I'll go back and I'll show you how I played instead. I retreated the bishop to e3. Okay, so remember, if I had taken the knight on f6, black would have lost the control of d5, okay? Uh, because uh, the knight wouldn't be there anymore to support the push on d5 and the queen wouldn't be there anymore. Okay, so let's see what happened. Actually, he can play d5 now. Okay, so the situation becomes critical in the center of all the pawns being in contact. Okay, so there is a lot of tension in the center. I have retreated the bishop, pawn takes, knight takes, and uh, black is slightly better in this position. Pawn takes to e5, I'm eliminating the tension, and now after the trade on e3, black remains with a pair of bishops. Okay, so we move on and I trade some more pieces. I develop my queen, queen to h4, threatening to take on h2, so obviously I have to defend it. I push the pawn to g3 to stop the other bishop and 
not weakening the dark squares, of course, because I have the light squared bishop. Queen to e7, pawn to c4, f5. And now my knight has to go back. Can you see I have an isolated pawn on e3? That is a very weak pawn. But still the position is not very open. So his pair of bishops is not that dangerous yet. Okay, I brought the rook to f3. That is an inaccuracy. I wanted to uh, protect my pawn and make space for my knight to go on f1 to defend it better. So pawn to c5, knight f1, queen e5. Now I'll try to trade the queens. He doesn't accept my proposition. I go back, rook to b8. And now can you see that I have an outpost on b5. Okay, so rook to b5, I infiltrate. I would like to then uh, double with my queen. So queen to e5, back in the center. Uh, this rook on f3 is not having a good position, so I will reposition it on the second rank so that at some point I can uh, transfer it on the queen side. So probably I would like to play queen to b2, trade queens and double the rooks. So he moves the bishop back, queen to b2, he retreats the queen. Good. So now uh, I have played, I think, uh, the best move, rook to d2. Yes, this is also the computer's recommendation. I'm bringing the other rook on the other open file, the central file. Uh, I'm probably uh, threatening a discovered attack. And now black makes this move, which is a mistake. Okay, we can see it here, rook to b5 is a mistake. And can you see on the graphic how all of a sudden, okay, uh, from his advantage we went to uh, an equal position after queen to d6 and then uh, now white's advantage is that of being able to have a passed pawn okay after black took on b5 i will be able to take with a c pawn c takes b5 the best line what does it do it threatens to play bishop to c4 check of course that is a discovered check and black would be losing the queen and enables b6. What does this tell me? This tells me that I have a passed pawn and I would like to push it and promote, right? Okay, and enables also queen to c4 by making uh, way through c4 if I would like to reposition my queen and attack on c5. Good, so this is what I did indeed. I took with a b pawn, so he stops the pawn with a queen. I check the king, it moves away. Queen to b3 is an inaccuracy. Okay, queen to g6. King to f2, I just wanted to move my king away from the queen, but after queen to f6, we have another very important moment in the game when I completely uh, lost the advantage for the rest of the game actually. Um, and then uh, he took the initiative and and thus uh, he won the end game okay so what i did play here was bishop to e2 which is not a good move it is a blunder okay um it is not clearly seen you know at first sight that it is a blunder it is a positional blunder not a tactical blunder i'm not losing a piece in one move but the problem about it it it's that uh, it is very passive and it allows black to have a sudden attack, which he did not do. But let's see, it is also very important not only to analyze the position and see um, the factual moves that were made, but what could have been done better, not only on our side, but also on our opponent's side. So after bishop to e2, he played bishop to e6. But let's see, it was much better for him. This was the right opportunity to push f4. And I'm seeing it right here, right? Okay, so he's threatening to take on g3. Let's see what else. So um, he's threatening to take on g3. And when I bring the king on e1, g2, can you see he's attacking my knight? And he's threatening to promote pawn to g1. Okay, so I'll close this. And uh, after f4, I could have taken with the e-pawn. And in that case, 
Uh, can you see the pawn on f4 is pinned? So he can push g5, queen f3, g takes f4, and black's bishops become extremely powerful. They have open diagonals, and black is still threatening to take on g3 and completely open the whole position. Okay, so in order to prevent that, I should have played something else. I should have anticipated his threat, which was the push on f4, by simply playing king to g1. Okay, so king to g1 is good because it vacates f2 and enables the rook to go back there to defend against black's attack and moves the white king away from danger. Good, allows the pawn um, on f4 to guard e5, just in case he will push the pawn, we'll see here the line, just in case he pushes the pawn on f4 after I played king to g1, then I can take on f4, okay, and now I'm guarding the e5 square, and it looks like my position is safe. We can even see the whole variation here. Good. Okay, so king to g1, what had happened if he pushed pawn to g5? This is very interesting to see. I should bring my rook back. Can you see this rook from f2 x-rays the black queen on f6? And counters the threat pawn to f4. Rook to d8. Knight to d2. It is essential to activate that knight. Enables, enables knight e4. I like this. Okay. If black, for example, plays pawn to h5 to continue his attack by wanting to push h4 and weaken my pawn structure, I can play knight to e4, knight in the center, attacking the queen, attacking the pawn on g5, and attacking the pawn on c5. Because the pawn on f5 is spinned, we saw that the rook x-rays the queen. Great, so let's go back. If bishop b7 to control e4, I could bring my bishop back to f1 and even bring it to g2 and want to trade bishops. Bishop d5, knight to c4, king to g7. And of course, this is a playable end game. Uh, and it is much better than what happened in the game, in the actual game. So let's go back to this very important moment when actually I brought the bishop to e2. Bishop to e6, queen to a3. Again, a mistake. I'm attacking the pawn on c5, but my pieces are really disconnected. So he starts marching on with his passed pawn. And uh, from this moment, I couldn't do anything to stop that pawn anymore. Okay, rook to b8, bishop to c6. I'll just show you the rest of the game. I blocked the pawn. The bishops are strong in the center now. He's attacking my rook. And finally, f4. You see, this threat was a potential threat that finally took place. And of course, if I take it twice, in the end, he will take with the queen on f4 and threaten my rook on c1. Okay, he sacrifice. Uh, he gives the bishop for the rook, basically. Okay, so he pushes even more. He wants to bring the bishop to b2 and then promote. We trade queens. He takes the other pawn. Knight e2, bishop to c4, pinning the knight. So 51 moves. <laughs> After bishop c4, I have resigned. Okay, so uh, this was a very, very important example of how we should lead our game. And especially uh, now that we have analyzed the game, I know what to do next time, right? So if uh, a position such as this will occur in one of my games when when he will push h6 now i know that i have to trade the bishop for uh, for the knight on f6 so this was the key moment in the game this i should remember next time take the knight and in this way uh, he loses the strength on d5 and cannot push the pawn and have a counter attack well, I thank you so, so, so much for your attention and uh, I cannot wait to talk to you in our next video.